Hello. And walk. Bro, what is my hair doing today? Hello. And welcome to the vlog. <laughs> Why can I be serious? Hello and welcome to today's vlog. So today I want to talk about how to build a rock solid Christmas plan. If you would just give me 15 minutes every time, okay? This video is going to be right for you. If you've ever, if you can relate to being on the Christmas struggle boat, you know what I'm talking about, okay? I'm talking about just pulling out your hair for Christmas. It's last minute and you're just now putting up the decorations. You have to wrap the night before Christmas. And like you so, you hate wrapping at this point. You just so stressed out and you're like, I fell. Next Christmas, I'm gonna do it better. If that's something that you, you said to yourself last year or ever said to yourself, this is gonna be the video for you. Cause I'm gonna talk about how to just sit down for fit. You could even do it right now while we're talking. Build this plan out, sis, okay? So that this year things can be different. If you do what I tell you to do, it's going to help you so much. Just feel organized, be able to break your work up and space it out so it really doesn't feel like you're doing that much week to week. But better yet, be able to incorporate your Christmas stuff into routines and things that you're already doing. Every week you go to the grocery store, every week you sit down to plan, every week you run errands. And if you are intentional, you can just be like ticking off little tiny things that you need to do for your Christmas planning. And by time Christmas is here and you finally feel that adrenaline, like, oh my gosh, I got it ready. You'll be like, ta-da, half the things are done. That sounds like something you would like to invite into your life. Let's, let's chat, let's have a conversation about it, okay? Um, in this video, I'm going to, in the description box, you should find links to like very detailed like planning vi videos that will show you how to do it. The videos are long, but once you kind of understand um, like the steps, it should just take you a few minutes to do it on your own. Um, but in this video, I'm going to give you an overview. And then if you want to kind of go see it in detail, then I have videos that will walk you through that. So let's get into it. But before we do... Are we friends yet? Are, have you subscribed to the channel yet? Go ahead and do that. It's, it, it's free, you know, and it's a beautiful way to support your girl. Hit the like button if you feel excited about today's content and um, make sure you follow me on Instagram. I like to share a lot of behind the scenes stuff over there. So like the things that we're going to talk about today, if you want to hear like more of my thought processes and kind of see me kind of doing things out, you know, from a day to day or week to week perspective, then definitely go over there for behind the scenes. All right, let's get started. Step one, whenever you sit down with your sheet of paper, first of all, go ahead and get a sheet of paper, get a pen, get some highlighters. You know, you know, if you're a planner girl, you know how we like it, okay? Get all the things that get you feeling like inspired and ready to kick butt. Go ahead and lay it out. You're gonna need to start with, if you know, just a blank sheet of paper, a couple of sheets of paper, and um, a couple of pens and some highlighters. You don't need the highlighters, but you know, it's just nice, okay? And the first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to divide that paper into four sections, like that. And you're going to try to think of about four major milestones, goals, or objectives that you need to think about in order to kind of help you, you know, get things done for Christmas. If you need to, if four is not enough, and I'll give examples in just a minute, then you can stretch that, make it like give or take, you can make it five steps or six milestones, but try not to go too much further beyond like the six, so four to six, but four is really good. So just try to think of like, what are the four main categories of things that you need to accomplish? whether that's gift giving, whether that's food, whether that's decorations, um, whether that's family traditions. So just think of like what four buckets are the most applicable to you, four to six buckets, and then go ahead and label your paper with one category per section. If you need to flip over to the back because you're gonna be a five to six bucket girly, go for it, okay? So if you do this as correctly as 
prescribed. What this is gonna allow you to do is be at the appropriate level of conceptualizing to be able to make effective plans. Because what some of us girlies do, I do both of these, is we either think too high level and we're like, <laughs> I got this under control. You know, it's Christmas, but it ain't nothing but just throw up a tree or something and make a little dinner. You know, I got this under control. So we think too high level and we shoot ourselves in the foot when the time actually comes and we realize there's more involved than we were actually anticipating. Or on the other end, we think about it too, like we're just getting too in the weeds and we'd be trying to write every single little tiny thing that comes to our mind. It's unorganized, it's chaotic. And then it's really hard to want to show up because we're like overwhelmed. So I have found that thinking in these big categories um, kind of gets you right at the right sweet spot for like how high level, yet how granular you should be thinking about this so that it's not overwhelming, but you can be realistic about how much work is involved. This is a technique that I learned from Chelsea Joe at Systemize Your Life. I always like to give credit where credit is due because this technique was a game changer for me, okay? So here's what happens if you don't do it. Basically all those things I told you. Um, you're gonna not get started. You're going to encourage procrastination because you're not gonna be thinking that this is the project and give it the attention that it needs to be executed in a way that doesn't overwhelm you or you're just gonna feel like chaotic and all, all over the place and you're not going to be as organized as you could have been, okay? So here's one thing to take into consideration as you're doing this step. Um, you're gonna think of your four categories and let's say that, wow, Lede, I actually have like 10 categories of things I need to do. Like, it's a lot. What I would recommend that you do is see if there are any categories that can be consolidated and do that. Or let's say that you're one of the girlies that's just like, I only have like two categories. See if any of those categories can be broken down into um, like branched off and broken down into smaller pieces. So really try to get to that four to six. That's what I would recommend. All right, let's move into step two. Um, we're going to take those big categories and break them down into smaller pieces. So let's start with category one, whatever that is for you. Okay, if you need an example of like the categories that I used, I'm going to link a video from last year when I did my Christmas planning and it'll give you lots of ideas to work with. Well, let's say you know what you're, girl, we doing category one. Category one is gonna be all about decorations. So within category one, let's think of like four other um, like major stepping stones that we would need to take to be able to handle all of our decorations or whatever that is in that category for you. So for me, I would probably wanna have some time toward getting inspiration. I probably need to have time to purchase what I need. I probably need to have time to do the decorations. Um, or another way that we could break it down, if that doesn't make sense for you, is by um, the different areas in your home. So maybe you have everything that needs to get done by the fireplace. You have everything that needs to get done outside. You have your Christmas tree and just miscellaneous things that you wanna kind of do around the house. So just think of like four to six, like major kind of stepping stones that would be applicable for that category and go ahead and write them out. If you have space, try to leave a little bit of space after each category. So like write what it is that you're gonna do and like skip a couple of spaces, write what it is what you're gonna do, skip a couple of spaces and write what it is that you wanna do, if you have space. All right, so if you do this right, once again, what this is going to help you do is not get too lost in the weeds again. We don't want to get lost in the weeds until it's time for us to execute a specific task and then we can get lost in the weeds. So right now, we're just trying to keep it high level and not get overwhelmed, okay? Um, what we're trying to do is make your to-do list seem doable 
seem approachable, seem bite-sized, and more inviting for you to work on. All right, so if you go to either one extreme, which is doing not any, doing no planning, once again, we're gonna get stuck in that kind of high level spiral. But if you try to write every single little thing that you do, you can overwhelm yourself before you even have an opportunity to get started. And I don't want that for you. Um, I want you to worry about all those little details as they come. It is October. So we still have a good two months to get ready for this. So there are just some things that you don't need to think about. You just need to be aware that they need to happen, but you don't really need to get into the nitty gritty. So let's just leave it at that. So yeah, so at this point, you should have your four categories. And then underneath each of those, you should have about four to six stepping stones under each of those categories. So we talked about what it would look like for decorations. Let's say we're doing food and you want to make sure that you know the food is taken care of i would probably want to have a step to think about inspiration and identify the menu i would probably want to think about um tablescape like what we're gonna what it's gonna look like when we eat um is there anything i need to think about when it comes to like shopping for this stuff you know or let's say that you wanted to actually break it down by course what are we going to do for dinner what are we going to do for desserts um what can we make ahead you know so just think of the categories that make sense for you so if you go back to my former youtube video i kind of share what i did but there's just so many different ways that this can be broken down and in a way that's not going to be overwhelming so let's move into step three step three is let's go ahead and think about how to space this out um, so what I like to do is um, take how much time do I have before the event that I'm preparing for. So for us, it's Christmas. How do I divide that into like four quarters? Okay. And this just allows me to put the appropriate task into the right time. All right. Obviously, there's going to be things on your to do list that you cannot do until like we get closer to Christmas, like a couple of days before Christmas. So that's probably gonna be like cooking and things like that, maybe packing. I don't know if you're traveling or whatever this year, okay? So if I have my four quarters, I'm going to put things that are related to last minute stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into that fourth quarter. And then there's gonna be things that need to be done kind of like first quarter. So anything that has to do with planning, um, thinking, getting inspiration, ideas. For me, I would probably put those things toward the first quarter. And then you have quarter two and quarter three. And so for that, just, you know, probably before you can decorate or do anything, that's probably going to be a phase where you're going to be shopping and doing stuff like that. Quarter three is probably going to be a lot of execution and like doing the groundwork. And so just space it out in the way that makes the most sense. So I mentioned that we'll have these four quarters and those four quarters will vary depending on when you start, you know? If you start this two weeks before Christmas, quarter one's gonna be a half a week, quarter two's gonna be a half a week, quarter three's gonna be a half a week, quarter four is gonna be a half a week, you know? If you start this a month before Christmas, quarter one's gonna be a week, quarter two's gonna be a week, quarter three's gonna be a week, quarter four is gonna be a week. For me, I'm starting like a good, I started already and it's October. So I'm starting like a whole three months before Christmas. So I'll just break that up into whatever way makes sense and then be sure to know, okay, for this amount of time here, these three weeks, I'm just focusing on this part of my list and the rest of that list. I do not have to think about it until the time comes. So if you do this correctly, once again, this is just going to help create a brain friendly environment for your brain, okay? Because um, first of all, it's going to help you with time blindness. So this miraculous superpower that some of us have where we don't really realize how much time it takes to get things done. So when you get to see it, you know, externalize it, put it on paper, be able to manipulate and put things in the right place. Then you start to, you know, notice very quickly, oh wait, all of this stuff doesn't actually fit on two days before Christmas, I'm gonna run out of time. So maybe I should roll some of this back and roll some of this back. So it's gonna help you with time blindness. And then also 
um, sometimes it can be daunting to try to look at the big picture at once. So when you kind of break it down, ooh, my phone is, girl, is all over the place. You break it down, you just look at the section that's relevant and you know that I have a plan for the rest of that and I will get to it when I get, when I get to it. So if you wanna now get lost in the weeds and get into the nitty gritty, this will be the time to do it. Now that we are at a quarterly level and you're trying to figure out how am I gonna get this done before you know, I run out of the time that I have. Also, um, putting deadlines on stuff is gonna help kind of give you a kick in the pants because you'll kind of start to be able to see now visually that if I don't get this planning done, you know, here in Q1, then it's gonna roll into Q2 and Q2 is gonna be a lot heavier than it has to be. So to me, it just really helps give me that kick in the pants and it helps me see like, we ain't got all day, sis. All right, the last thing that I wanna tell you is if you decide to do this, to incorporate kind of planning it out in your life this way, try to the best of your ability to incorporate your Christmas planning into routines that are already an active part of your life. For example, if you know that you go shopping every week for groceries, you could be purchasing things that are Christmas related as well. Even if it's small, like I know I'm gonna be wrapping presents, so let me swing by and grab a pack of tape and some scissors because the scissors that we have now are crap and it's not gonna help me cut this wrapping paper. You know, you could do that for one week. If you know that the, you're coming back again the next week, you can be like, girl, let me grab this roll of wrapping paper. I'm walking past it anyway. I'm at Walmart and I see they got their stuff up. Let me just grab what I need, you know? Like, why do you gotta make an extra trip to the store or make an extra Amazon order or like make this like extra? It can be a part of what you're already doing. You know you making cookies for the neighborhood. You are already in the flower section for your weekly grocery shopping. You already placed in your Walmart order. Just add an extra pack of flour and then put it aside because you know that that's your Christmas stuff. They already got turkeys out. When you go to Aldi next, just put a turkey in your basket and then now you know that you got that taken care of so there's like so many little things that you can do um that literally add nothing to your life that when christmas comes you're gonna be like i'm so happy that i don't have to like run out to the store and get all this stuff now because i already have it in my house and i have very little left to do now you know what i'm saying so try to incorporate that into your life and it's really going to save you from just having to feel like oh wow well, Christmas is extra it's extra work it's extra this and that you know because you found a way to incorporate it into what you've already are doing and just I'm trying to think of some other examples like you know you sit down every week to plan and to pay bills and to do desk stuff okay you're already at the desk just go ahead and tap open Pinterest and type in, you know, ideas for Christmas trees. And there you go, what you like, print it out. And then that's what will turn into your shopping list. I like the red balls on the Christmas tree. I like the silver, whatever those little trolley things are called. I like the icicles. You write you a little, a little list and next time you go to Walmart, you have that list in your back pocket. And you know, now you know what to look for. Um, you know, you know, the next week you're gonna come back and pay bills again. Christmas menu ideas. Okay, I like this recipe. I wanna try this. Let me see if they got the ingredients list. Now let me add that to my shopping list. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, take advantage of what you're already doing. You got your anti-procrastination day, a day set aside to do stuff that you don't feel like doing. You wanna know what I don't feel like doing? I don't feel like wrapping presents. That's what I don't feel like doing. I don't feel like wrapping presents. So guess what you might want to add to your anti-procrastination day or your get it all done day or whatever it is your catch-up day you know you um have a day where you're out the house you got an errand day where you're out the house and you're like already going to be out in the neighborhood out in the city take a special stop to that christmas store to pick up that sign that you said you wanted in the front yard you know you're already going to be out and about like it doesn't have to be this extra thing i mean it can be but you can be leveraging like that energy that you're already spending to do your normal weekly routine stuff so um please get into that because if you're a busy mom 
you know, you got a lot of stuff on your plate. I'm telling you, this is the key to just make it feel doable. Is that to say that when Christmas comes, that it's gonna be like, oh, holly jolly, like I really don't have anything to do. I really, no, but at least it will feel like a normal, typical kind of stress and not the traumatic kind. And that's what I'm trying to do. And that's what I'm trying to help do. That's what I'm trying to help spread this year, okay? So let's recap. Once again, I have videos. I hoped that this video would just be more to get you thinking, to get you excited about it, to kind of give you a high level overview. But if you want to know what this looks like in action, I'm gonna have some videos linked that will show you step-by-step step what to do. Um, and then even if you guys are following me on Facebook, I'm doing it a little bit differently. I'm using this app called Tick Tick that is also helping me with like planning projects. So Tick Tick is a little bit different, it's pretty cool because instead of like breaking it down by quarters, I can just literally drag and drop my task to like when I plan to do them throughout the month. So that's a little bit different. You know, if you go over to the Instagram, we may talk about that a little bit more, but this is just good enough to get started and to get you in the right place. So I'll drop those links down below. But just to recap, number one, you're going to think about your four major milestones, four to six, keep it real high level, okay? Not too high where you don't have enough categories, but definitely not any smaller than that where we can get lost in the weeds. Next, under each milestone, we're gonna think about what are like the four major steps that would be involved to help you accomplish that. If you want to, I didn't say this before, but you can even drop that like even lower. So you're gonna have your main category, a sub category, and then you can even do a sub sub category just to break that list down and make it bite size, you know? And then after that, we're gonna think about how are we going to space this out realistically and in a way that fits my lifestyle. I recommend taking the time that you have left and breaking it down quarterly and breaking it down into quarters and then arranging those tasks, those tasks, those subtasks and those sub subtasks and putting it into the right quarter. And you'll start to feel it when you're like, ooh, this is too much going on over here in quarter four. I'm gonna move that back to quarter three. Ooh, you know, space it out, go with your intuition. Your intuition will let you know um, what you need to space out and what it's just doing team too much. And then lastly, once you kind of have a plan in place, when you think about executing, think about trying to incorporate as much as possible into your normal, typical weekly routine. If you're going to the store, knock out some of those action items that are shopping related while you're already at the store. If you have um, planning stuff, knock out some of those planning things while you're already at the desk handling admin stuff for your home. You know, if you're already gonna be doing errands, knock out some of those errand related tasks while you're already at the house and you know you're gonna be gone all day. If you have stuff that you just don't wanna do, knock out some of those items on your get it all done, your anti-procrastination day, and you will take yourself so far in terms of preparing for the holidays that you're just gonna be like, I cannot even believe that I didn't do this before, okay? You're gonna be like, it just wasn't even all that deep. And like, I made so much progress and I'm telling you, it's the truth. But you just have to sit down for these 15 minutes, plan it out so that you can be intentional, okay? Thank you guys so much for watching this video and um, I appreciate being here. And if you could like this video, share it with anyone you know who might like support in this area, that would help me out greatly. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.